In today's video, I'm gonna show you my three favorite tips to make realistic reflections in Cinema 4D. You don't wanna miss this one. Hey, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now, today's tutorial is all about making realistic looking reflections in Cinema 4D, but before we get started, I wanted to make sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube where we have plenty more videos just like the one you're about to watch. And if you're a professional in the industry and you wanna speed up your workflow in Cinema 4D, don't forget to check out our Grayscale Gorilla plugins. I'm gonna link those up down below and right here on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you my three favorite tips to make more realistic reflections inside of Cinema 4D. For this tutorial, I'll be using the physical and standard renderer, but these tips actually work in almost every third-party renderer as well. And stay tuned at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a way to speed up your reflection workflow. If you're working in production, you don't wanna miss the end of this video. Okay, with that, let's get into today's tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D, and what I have is a model I got from Turbo Squid. I replaced the logo with the Grayscale Gorilla logo, make it a little bit more personal, and uh, I added an HDR to the scene with HDR Studio Rig, and added a little bit of GI to start to get some lighting bouncing around. And I also just textured everything with regular standard textures. So if you're following along, that's kind of the setup for this scene. And what I figured I'd do is start to texture this and show you the tips, the three tips that I use in almost every texture to start to make it look more realistic. So let's open up this plastic texture and get started. Now this is the default texture when you make a new texture in Cinema 4D using physical and standard render. Now, like many things in cinema, the defaults are made to render fast, not necessarily look realistic. So you're gonna have to change a few things when you open up a new texture. And the first thing you're gonna do is go into the reflectance channel and delete this default specular. Now, specular is a very fast way to make, you know, kind of fake looking reflections, but it's not realistic. This is not the first tip, but uh, it is something you should do in almost every case. So now that we're left here without reflection, what do we do? Well, if you're new to reflectance here, um, you can click this add button and this menu is gonna pop up and all these crazy options are gonna be available. Now, um, I won't get into all these options here, but if you're following along, just go ahead and click Beckman. That's kind of a basic one to start with. And uh, you're gonna get this pure reflective chrome material. Now, this is gonna be the first tip because this first, this reflective, pure reflective everything chrome is not very realistic. And the first tip I'm gonna show you is to always add Fresnel to your reflections. And what Fresnel is, is a realistic way that reflections fall off objects. Almost nothing in life has this pure chrome reflective um, look to it. Wood and metal and, and plastics and everything you see around you, um, practically everything has Fresnel on it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come down here, open up this um, uh, triangle here, click on Fresnel and pick dielectric. And now instantly you're gonna see a much more realistic um, pattern of reflection. It's not so in your face, it's not a chrome, uh, and you can actually put textures under this and it'll allow the reflection to kind of hover over your object and over your textures instead of take over your entire material. So in fact, I'm gonna turn off our color channel just so we could see only the reflections. And you're seeing already, like if this was a black plastic, we're, we're getting actually pretty close already just with some Fresnel. Now, uh, the tip number two I wanna show you is to uh, experiment, always experiment with roughness and bump on your textures. Um, nothing in real life, you know, to make things look more realistic, almost nothing in real life is perfectly um, clean and, 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 and has perfect reflection. You want to add imperfections to your render to make it look more realistic. So one of the things you can do is just turn up the roughness. I'm just gonna turn it up like 8%. And you're gonna see over here in this model, it's gonna be a very subtle difference. But now you're seeing it's not a clean edge on all those reflections. There's little imperfections now. And in fact, as you turn this up, it's gonna look uh, not just uh, more blurry, but almost like a different type of texture. And again, this is much more realistic than this pure, you know, just clean reflection. The other thing you could do is add a bump. Now, I won't get into this in this tutorial just because it's 
Um, I'm gonna try to make this one a little bit quicker today, but uh, if you add bump here or in here, you can start to add little imperfections. And again, uh, later in this tutorial, I'll show you how to really quickly add bump. Um, but for now, the second tip is to always experiment and always try to use a, at least a little bit of roughness or a little bit of bump in your texture. So I'm gonna turn this up and let's go with about 20, something like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, now let's get into the third tip. Now the third tip when it comes to reflectance and making realistic reflections is to layer your reflections. Many, many objects around you, and, and that's what we're trying to repl replicate, right? Looking at the real world, seeing how it works, and then trying to replicate it inside of 3D. Many of these objects around you um, have different layers of reflection. And so let me show you what I mean by that. In reflectance here, we have layer one, and this one's kind of just a little bit blurry. We have about an 18% blur, and this looks really nice, but watch what happens when we combine this with a more clean reflection. You're gonna start to see a lot more detail in the reflection, a lot more richness in your textures as you start to layer. So how do you do that? Well, you can click add and just click Beckman again, and now it's gonna have another layer of texture on top of it. Now again, the problem is with this, by default you have to go turn on your Fresnel, boom. So let's go do that. And then um, you're gonna have to, again, adjust the roughness just a little bit. Now in this case, I'm only gonna add maybe 3%. And now look at this, this is just black. There's no underlying um, texture under here, but look at the richness of what we have going on here with reflection from the sky and all this stuff. Now on their own, just one of these, just the just the base uh, reflection, that looks okay. And let me turn that off and do just the, the, the glossy on top. That looks okay. But when you combine them, this is why this third tip is so important. When you combine them, it starts to add this richness that act, that real textures have, that real materials in the real world have. Now, look, grab something around you and look. Try to find the different layers. Maybe it, um, it has a base color that's one layer, and then it has some sort of bumpiness texture on top, and then maybe there's a like a gloss coat on top of it. This is how you should think when you start to, um, you know, layer up your materials and add those imperfections and add and add um, the Fresnel to make it stand out here. So now if this was kind of black plastic, we'd be okay. But what if you want to add some color? Well, you, you could use the color channel and you could bring in other textures, but you can even add a base color inside of reflectance, right? So in this case, we could go add another Beckman, make it really blurry and change it to a, like a dark red or something like that and bring it way down. And again, what's the thing I say that has to be on every texture? You need Fresnel. So let's go ahead and do that. And in this case, I'm gonna turn up our reflection strength and we're let, and start to see what we're gonna get. Now, let me turn both of these off. We have a very dark red here and I actually want this to be much, um, much brighter. And so I'm just gonna turn down our uh, refraction or our, our um, uh, our Fresnel just a little bit to get some of that red back. And now you can see what we're doing here. You can see the power of layering. We have this red bottom. Up next, we have this glossy kind of coat on top of it. And then this super polished coat on the very top. And now we could dial these up and down and, and start to build it. Now, let me show you the final textured headset and why all these things combined um, are very important. So in this case, we have this nice red plastic with all three different layers here. And I wanted to just run through quickly some of these other layers because they all do these three tips. Now this leather here is uh, not only has a bump texture for the leather, but it also has Fresnel and two different layers to get it um, to give it this look. Same with the metal, there's a brushed metal here that has this nice brushed look. So we didn't get into that, but we, ha we have other tutorials that go over different types of metals. And uh, this rubber here, the plastic, and even this outside plastic, which is kind of plain, it still has um, uh, more than one layer on it just to make it stand out. So at the beginning of this tutorial, I, I told you that I was gonna show you how to do this stuff much quicker. And so let's go back to our original texture here, or the, the one that we just made. 
And again, that looks pretty good, but you could see when we opened up reflectance, all these settings um, were here and we really only used you know, two or three of these settings. Now, when reflectance came out and we saw the power of it, but we also saw the complication on setting all this stuff up and, and the bad defaults, um, that's what made us build top coat. Now, top coat is a way that you can add reflections to any texture, and all of those reflections follow the three tips that I gave you. We make it easy to add Fresnel because every one of our presets have Fresnel built in ready to go. And we bring all of the important sliders up front so that you can uh, texture your models much easier. In fact, I made all of these textures with top coat and Texture Kit Pro in minutes, and it was all set to go. So let me show you how we could build that same plastic texture here using top coat, and we could save a bunch of time. So let's go into reflectance here. I'm gonna delete all these. And again, you could use the regular reflectance if you want, but if you're like me or you're working in production, you know that saving time is important. You know that the more that you can get done, the more that you know you could take on more clients, all that stuff. So let's get started here. All you have to do is select the texture you wanna start with. In this case, let's just use this regular texture. I deleted all the other materials or the, all, the, all the other reflect, uh, reflection off of it and we're all set to go. Now top coat allows you to instantly layer your textures uh, just by clicking on these presets. So in this case, let's start with a matte preset. Now this matte preset is gonna give us that base color. And I just clicked on it and look, it's all ready to go. And in fact, we exposed the most important controls like color, uh, blurriness, reflection, all right here so that you can go into your modifiers, adjust the important sliders, head back to top coat, and then continue to layer your textures. So in this case, I'm gonna turn down the Fresnel amount, turn up the reflection amount, and get this red, nice deep red going. Okay, boom, that's layer one. Now, when you start to combine layers, it's as easy as this. All you have to do is hold down shift and then click the next layer that you want to add on top of this. In this case, I'm gonna add the gloss layer. Shift click, it's gonna add the gloss to it. Now look over here, boom, that is done. Like it's already got the blurriness built in. And maybe what I might do is add a little bit of color to this just to make it match our um, red so it's not so pure white. Yeah, see, there you go. Okay, so that looks better. Now, again, another layer, all I have to do is shift click. And in this case, I want the lacquer layer. Click, shift click, and boom. Now we have this clean top coat on top of it. Now it's a little bit heavy. I want to dumb down um, our, our overall reflection layers and that looks much better. And in fact, I want to go back into our mat and again, turn up the reflection amount, turn down the Fresnel amount, bring a little bit more red into this. That looks much better and maybe even change this uh, into a more saturated color to really give it some more richness in the reflection. So watch what happens right here. See that, see that orange starts to pop out? And so that's how quickly you can use top coat to start to build your textures. And again, this is why we built this tool. Many of our tools are built to speed up your workflow. Uh, and, and anytime we see something in cinema that we could go, you know, if, if the presets were a little bit cleaner or more realistic, let's go see if we could solve that problem. And I think we did with top coat. Now, I didn't get into all the stuff that top coat does, like add you know, bumps, which I mentioned, you know, things like leather that I used on the entire headphone here, I got from uh, Top Coat as well. You could do blurry uh, reflections uh, and also some masks. So all these things in introduce imperfections and real world material building into your Cinema 4D physical and standard render. And if you wanna learn more about Top Coat, we have plenty more tutorials and much more on our website. You can go to our store and check out some videos that we have there. But if you use reflections and you texture a lot of stuff in Cinema 4D um, and want to speed up that workflow, please go check it out. And again, don't forget to, no matter if you have Top Coat or not, Always remember those three tips on adding Fresnel, adding imperfections like blurriness, and also trying to layer your materials for more realistic textures.
Thanks again for watching everybody. And real quick, a question of the day for you. What is a tip that you have to make your reflections look more realistic in Cinema 4D? Share them down in the comments. We love seeing any feedback that you have about our tutorials as well. All right, with that, I wanted to thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you in another Grayscale Gorilla tutorial really soon. All right, bye everybody. Grab something in your office and rotate it around. Look at all the imperfections when it moves. That is blurry reflections, bump channels. Look at that stuff. I'm serious, this stuff works, folks.